Right, uh, this is the fourth video in the Expan Log section on modeling with Expan Log with exponentials and logarithmic uh, functions. Um, so just uh, a, a little bit about modeling in general, I think, to set this in, in context. Uh, why do we do this? So, um, well, you will, uh, you know, we, if we've got uh, a relationship between two variables that we're interested in, uh, then really the model is a simplified form of that relationship. There may be all sorts of parameters involved if we, you know, if we're looking at the relationship between two variables. But what we're trying to do is simplify it right down to give us um, an equation, a relationship that we then can use for predictive purposes. Um, now, it's a model, so it's not necessarily going to give us totally accurate predictions but it's going to give us predictions that we can we can use so that's basically the idea is to simplify a complex relationship uh, to provide a mechanism for predicting now there are different sorts of models you know we can assume uh, we can we can t form a model which is a linear uh, between two variables just a, you know a simple straight line relationship um so that's what we've got here, y equals at plus b. I've used t here as the independent variable because um, very often these problems are time-based in which, you know, we always use t for the for, for, for the letter there. Um, they're not necessarily all time-based. It could be, it could be other things, but, uh, but time is a, is a pretty recurrent theme and y is uh, is just a general variable we, which could relate to the the value of a financial investment or the the population of rabbits on a in a colony or, or or all sorts of things so y and t are the variables that we're interested in modeling a and b are uh, are will be unknowns and this this uh, relationship won't be useful until we can actually find out you know, what A and B are. Um, so we have to resolve for those. Um, <clears throat> quadratic models we have, yeah, something of this form. Um, again, A here, A, B and C are unknowns. Uh, these tend to crop up quite a bit. Very often we're looking at uh, um, inverse uh, quadratics where the coefficient of A is uh, is negative um but not always uh, but that does seem to be the the most uh, common type and then we've got our exponential models which uh, look like this um a equals e to the power of kt so this is a sort of a, a fairly straightforward exponential model and in this case if uh, if if a uh, if um, k is positive, then we see the graph rising up um, uh, rapidly. Um, if k is negative, k is always assumed to be a positive number, by the way. But if it's minus k uh, t, then it will be an exponential decay. So that might reflect, say, the value of a car uh, over time as it depreciates, something like that. The model might not be quite of that form. Uh, for instance, we may see um, not the Euler's number E here, but um, some other number might be an integer too, could, might, might be anything really, but uh, very often uh, you know, there'll be a, a whole number in there. And then rather than KT, there might be something more complicated as the, uh, as the exponent there possibly quadratic. Um, but of course, you know, a function which gets too complicated uh, isn't going to be useful for what we want, which is, you know, a, a, it won't be a model anymore if it becomes too complicated. Okay, so essentially what we, we need to do is identify what model we're using. And very often the question that we're, that, that we're asked to do, if it's a problem in an exam, then it will probably either state explicitly or imply what the model is going to be, which of these or others, in fact, it might be. Then we have to resolve for these unknowns. 
A and B, or A and B and C, or K, and using the boundary conditions. Now, boundary conditions um, are a, a pair of values of Y and T in this case, um, that if we substitute them into the equation, then it's going to help us to actually resolve for the for the unknowns. Initial conditions are a special form of a boundary condition, basically uh, where t equals zero um, tends to relate to, to time-based problems. Um, OK, and then uh, once we've resolved, we've got a fully resolved equation, and then we can use that in order to make predictions of y from t or uh, also predictions of t from y. OK. So that's the basic idea. Um, just uh, another couple of things worth saying is that we'll come on in uh, in a later section to the idea of log graphs. And that's just where if this is our relationship, then um, very often it's useful if we want to represent it graphically. Certainly, if we take the log of both sides of the equation, we get something like this. And um, and when in looking at this, we can see this looks like a straight line. Y equals um, mx. This is the this is the gradient times your um, independent variable, and that's the that is the intercept on the y axis. So we can actually um, turn our exponential model into a linear model which uh, can be useful. We come back to that in, in, another, in another video. Um, the differential equations also are a form of modeling. And um, in this particular case, uh, we would have to uh, use calculus in order to find an expression of y in, to, uh, y in terms of t, uh, and then uh, resolve the unknowns that come out of that. Uh, that process so that's uh, that is uh, a kind of the sort of general idea of modeling and where exponential models fit into that scheme of things so we'll have a look at a couple of examples um just uh, use that uh Okay, so here's one. The, the total number of views V of a viral video clip that is released on the internet is given by the formula V equals 150 times 2 to the power of D. So uh, what we notice about this, first of all, it hasn't got any unknowns in it. It's, it's, it's already fully resolved. So we've, 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 uh, we're sort of, uh, we're sort of uh, skipping that stage. But I think we can see that when d equals zero um then after zero days then the number of views is equal to 150 times two to the power of zero is 150 so when it's released it's released we're already with 150 150 views have happened you know at the point it's 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 released okay so how many days um does it take for the video to reach 1 million views? Uh, I might also say, of course, that here we're not using the Euler's number. We, you know, we've got a value of two here, but uh, it's, nonetheless, it's still a, uh, a an exponential model. How many days does it take for the video to reach 1 million views? So we're basically solving this equation. The number of views is equal to 150 times two to the power of D. Uh, okay, so, um, um, just to divide through by 150, we get 2 to the power of d equals this. And then um, in order to get this d from the argument into the subject of this equation, now we need to take the log of both sides. We take log base 2. <clears throat> then um, we've got d equals log base 2 of 2,000 minus log base 2 of 3. And it's just applying your log rules, and that gives us D equals 9.38, etc. cetera. Um, so that's how many days it takes for the video to reach 1 million views. OK. Um, explain why this model will eventually break down. Well, <laughs> it's a model, of course. Um, and one thing about models is that they do tend to... Um, 
kind of work quite well within a particular range of values. And then outside that range, uh, they become less and less useful and more and more inaccurate. Um, you know, why would it break down? Well, eventually, um, you know, everybody's seen it. <laughs> so uh, people are, you know, not going to keep keep viewing it. Somebody might, you know, people might look at it for a second or a third time, but eventually, you you know, your 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 marketplace, if you like, is going to be saturated. So it won't keep it won't keep growing, but, but over over a certain period of time, then um, you know then it's, it you know it may well be a good good model. Okay, so that's a relatively straightforward one. Let's have a look at this one. There's a little bit more to it. On first of January nineteen hundred, a sculpture was valued at eight hundred, and when sold on first of January nineteen fifty six, six years later, its value was five thousand. OK, so we're given this model V, the value is equal to A times K to the power of T. The T is the time in years since this start point here, 1900. A and K are constants. Write down the value of A. OK, so there we've got our equation. Um, and the, I mentioned that these are these are the boundary conditions, but of course the, the boundary conditions are not always given to you explicitly, you know, T equals zero, V equals 80. Um, sometimes they're implicit from these statements. So you have to be able to, to pick those out of there. So in this case, yeah, we've got T, when T equals zero, V equals 80, we plug those values into the equation, then we're gonna get 80 equals A times K to the power of zero, K to the power of zero being one, and therefore A is equal to 80. And then it says show that K equals 1.07, et cetera, to five decimal places. Well, uh, we've uh, we've got to the point where we say V equals 80 K to the power of T. So if we then take that equation and substitute uh, T equals 56, V equals 5,000, which is what we've got from this statement, um, then uh, when we rearrange that, we're going to get k to the power of 56 equals 62.5. And then if we take the 56th root of 62.5, not something you do every day, uh, but your calculator will hand that, handle that uh, quite happily. And uh, that's going to give us you, you a k of 1.076, et cetera. Um, so that is it. And therefore, we now know that our... our fully resolved equation is this for V equals 80 times 1.07664 to the power of T. Right, so in part C, it says use the model to show that the value of the sculpture on 1st of January 2006 will be greater than 200,000 pounds. So essentially we're just using our equation, um, which is already, um, explicit in V, substitute T in, um, V equals 80 times 1.07664 to the power of 106. Pop that in the calculator, and that's going to give you this value, 200,707, uh, which, of course, is greater than 200,000. So uh, so we've, uh, we've shown it's greater than 200,000. Uh, that's part one. And then C part two, uh, now, this is quite typical. Find the year in which the value of the sculpture will first exceed 800,000. So we have to we have to put that into a, an equation. Um, so this is the value, or the, you know, the, the function of T that gives you the value. And that's got to be greater than 800,000 divided through by 80. And we're going to get uh, 1.07664 to power t is greater than 10,000. Uh, now, uh, in order to move this um, t from the argument of a function, this is just an exponential function here, so from that we into the subject of the equation, then we're going to take log of both sides. In this case, it's the log of, and this is the base of the log, which is a bit strange. Um, but, um, you know, that calculator will handle that quite happily. So, um, so T equals that, which is 124.687, etc. 
So therefore the answer is 124 years later in the year 2024. Okay, so this is this is quite a typical form of problem uh, where we we have our problem. We have to apply our boundary conditions to get the the resolved equation. Then we use the equation first of all to find the, 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 the to, to to find a value of v for the value of, for a given value of t, which is nice and straightforward because v is the subject of the equation. But then we're asked to find the value of t for a value of v. So we have to go apply our log rules in order to, to actually uh, solve that equation. And in this case, they, they are, they're basically inequalities that we're working with, but the same principles will apply. Okay, so that basically is um, what we do with modeling exp and log. So hopefully, um, You've uh, you've gleaned something from that, and um, I'll see you in the next video.